So the historian Yuval Noah Harari, the one that wrote Homo sapiens and Homo Deus, he highlights in his book the idea of these belief systems that humans have and it helps them to cooperate together. I wanted to bring up some of the psychology behind why these group systems can grow, one of them being specifically group polarization. So group polarization, this is a concept in psychology where individuals feed off one another and they grow stronger and stronger in their beliefs. So for example, if you take a group of people that lean slightly to the left politically and they interact with one another and they discuss ideas, over time, if they're left alone and it's just people that are slightly left, they will oftentimes grow further and further left as they feed off one another. Same idea. If you have someone that is slightly to the right and they're surrounded by a bunch of other people that are on the right, a bunch of conservatives, they will become more and more conservative over time. And so Harari discusses the idea of these imagined belief systems. The real secret of success of our species is that we alone can talk about things that don't exist at all, anywhere, except in our own imagination in the stories that we invented. All the other animals, they too communicate, but they communicate information about things that really exist. You can never convince a chimpanzee to do something, say to give you a banana, by promising that chimpanzee that after you die, you know what happens? You will go to chimpanzee heaven, and there you will receive lots and lots of bananas for your good deeds. No chimpanzee will ever be convinced by such a story to do anything. Only us, only homo sapiens. The easiest example to give is, of course, religion. But it's not just religion. It's the same with our legal system, with our political system, with our economic system. Money is also just a story. Chimpanzees and dolphins and wolves, none of them man uses money. None of them, they, they can exchange things. I give you a banana, you give me coconut. But the idea of money, this is something unique to humans because, again, it is based on a story about something that exists only in our imagination. We take, say, a piece of paper or a piece of gold, which is worth nothing. You can't do anything with gold. You can't eat it, you can't drink it, you can't wear it, you can't even make weapons out of it because it's too soft. So you take something without any inherent value and you tell a story, look, this piece of worthless metal or this piece of colorful paper, it is worth 10 bananas. And if enough people believe that story, then it becomes an extremely effective story. Millions of strangers are willing to do amazing things and sometimes terrible things just for these colorful pieces of paper. So this is the power of the human imagination. So we see then that Homo sapiens, in contrast to all the other animals in the world, lives in a dual reality. Other animals, they live inside an objective reality. We humans also live in this reality. We also encounter trees and lions and, and rivers and mountains, but we also have another reality. In addition to this objective reality, we also live inside a fictional reality, a reality that we invented, that exists only in our imagination, a reality that contains things like nations, which are just the stories that we invented, which contains money, which uh, is populated by gods, which uh, includes things like human rights, which again, it's our invention. And what is amazing about history is not only that humans inhabit this dual reality, the, the layer of objective reality and or, or on it another layer of fictional reality. What is really amazing is that over time, fictional reality has become more and more powerful until we reach the situation today when the very survival of trees and rivers and lions and chimpanzees depends on the imaginary stories that Homo sapiens has invented. We are living inside the dreams of mythical entities like the European Union, 
and like Google and like the dollar, which exist nowhere except in these fictional stories. And you can test yourself, you can check for yourself, try to see what are you thinking about, what are you worried about during your day-to-day -day life. Many people find that they think very little about real things like trees and rivers and lions, and most of the day, they are constantly preoccupied by these fictional inventions like money and like nations and like gods and corporations and things like that. In his book, Sapiens, Harari also discusses how uh, some of these imagined realities also led to a lot of suffering. He highlights slavery in the United States, for example, and how the belief system that one race was superior to other to the others uh, it wasn't grounded in logic, it wasn't grounded in biology, but how this belief system led to a lot of pain and suffering. Uh, he also highlights how even though a lot of Americans today are okay uh, with the idea of economic inequality, they're not okay with the idea of racial inequality. He highlights that a lot of wealthy people were born into wealth and a lot of poor people were born into poverty. Uh, but yet that imagined reality that that's how it's supposed to be has been defended in the country for years. I'd strongly recommend this book. Go ahead and give my video a like, give me a subscription. Uh, again, the book is Yuval Noir Harari, Sapiens.